Hey YouTube, my name is Teal Apostate, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a manga haul. I feel like I'm on my booktube. <laughs> so yeah, um, I've recently hauled some manga, some of it's new, some of it's old, and I just kind of felt like sharing the manga that I've been hauling recently. So if you feel like watching that, um, stick around, I guess. So the first manga I picked up is All You Need Is Kill, and this is by Hiroshi Sakurazaka, Ryosuke Takeuchi, and Takeshi Obata. Takeshi Obata being the artist and also the artist of Death Note, which is why I picked it up. You might um, know this better under, I think it got remade um, as, I'm trying to remember what it's called now. Everyone thinks it's called Live Die Repeat, but it's not, that's the tagline. I think it was called Edge of Tomorrow. It was like a Tom Cruise film, it got remade for like a western audience, it was okay. Um, but this is the manga that that is like an adaptation of. I don't know how close the adaptation is because I haven't actually read this yet, but if you're familiar with that story, if you've seen the film, then that's kind of the basic plot. The main character, uh, Keiji, I'm pretty sure Tom Cruise's character was not called Keiji, <laughs> but um, Keiji, I think he's um, in the military and they wear these things called jackets, which is like a big exoskeleton metal suit thing. And he goes off to the battlefield to fight these like alien creatures and he dies on the battlefield. And every time he dies, he's reborn like uh, the day before and he just keeps like reliving the same day of the battle over and over and over again until he notices like one different thing which is this female um, soldier and he's kind of trying to figure out you know like why is he repeating the same day over and over again um, is she like the key to getting him out of the loop or is she you know gonna end up causing his like permanent death that's sort of the setup um, that's part of the synopsis and part of what I remember from <laughs> the Tom Cruise movie <laughs> So yeah, this is like a Tank on Bond style um, bind up. I think this is all of it. I think this is the whole manga in just like one single easy to carry volume. And I really like this whole red blue um, thing that it's got going on. I think this manga is in turn based on like a novel. Um, so uh, yeah, something kind of chunky for me to get stuck into when I feel like I need like a good sci-fi read. Next up, much more lighthearted, I have A Way of the House Husband by Kosuke Ono. I think I've talked about this manga before. Um, this. I love this. I picked this up on a whim because I really really liked the art style and I am a little bit biased towards like Yakuza type characters. Just personal taste. <laughs> and um, yeah, this is like a slice of life comedy and it's so funny. The comedy in this is like, it's a very similar vein of comedy to the sort of stuff that you get in like One Punch Man. Um, so if you like that style of comedy, you'll probably really like this. It's very like situational based, character based, but there's like a little bit of like slapstick ridiculous humour in here. It's very funny. So the story basically follows, I can't remember the main character's name. Does it say? No, <laughs> it doesn't tell me. He used to be called the Immortal Dragon, but um, I don't know his regular house husband name. But yeah, he was um, a really, really fearsome like mob boss, like head of his like Yakuza family or whatever. And then um, he met the love of his life and retired. And he's no longer a Yakuza. He's just a house husband. He cooks and cleans and attends like supermarket sales with coupons and just does like regular house husband things in a totally normal way, a totally, totally normal down to earth way that nobody could ever possibly mistake as like a double entendre for like um, Yakuza of things. Nobody would ever think that he was trying to like <laughs> intimidate them or anything like that. He's been totally normal. <laughs> um, yeah, the kind of brand of comedy is that he has obviously like lived his life doing things in a specific way and he very clearly doesn't realise when he's like being over the top and when his actions can be like misconstrued as threatening because he does tend to intimidate people accidentally and other people don't seem to listen to the words he's actually saying they just see his intimidating nature and assume that they're going to be attacked by a big scary mob guy when he just wants to like i don't know <laughs> buy some green onions or something um it's very funny and the art in this is really really good i think i talked about the art a little bit before in like one of my other videos but um basically and I'm like, I kind of do art, but I don't understand art, if that makes sense. Um, but I love the different weights of lines in this. I don't know if that makes sense, but like, it has such like a weighty presence on the page. There's a lot of like difference and variations in like thickness of lines and strokes. And it makes it just look really, I don't know, it's, it's not like unique, unique, but I would recognize it anywhere. And I really, really love 
like the whole quite thicker lined art style that makes it look like really bold and emphasizes like motion and things and it's just it's really nice it's really fun it's really nice i love the art style and i love the story and i love the character and um yeah <laughs> definitely um if you're looking for something like light-hearted and funny and just a little bit ridiculous um i do highly recommend this one i love this first volume okay next in my haul i picked up something completely on a whim and that is the witch and the beast by kosuke satake so this, I'm not entirely sure what it's about, but I picked it up kind of around Halloween and I thought I might read it then um, if there hadn't been like mad delays in shipping before this got to me. However, I read like a taster of like the first chapter. I can't remember if this was advertised to me or something. Um, but all I know is in the very first chapter, as it opens up, um, there are these two people and they're walking around, it's like a market and they're asking after, has anyone seen a witch? Can anyone direct us to the witch? And I don't think we've met the witch yet, um, but they're looking to settle like this score, I think. They're, they're after this witch. I don't know why, I don't know like the plot behind it yet. I know that's like really vague. This to me, like I really liked the cover actually um, and it seemed pretty interesting and I just decided to give it a go. Was it the art style that hooked me? Maybe? Actually, yeah, I think it was. It has a really nice art style. Just, um, for example, like, there's some of the art. So yeah, I kind of decided to pick this up on a whim, and once I have read it, I'll probably let you guys know what I thought about it, um, maybe in, like, a wrap-up or something. But yeah, that's kind of all I have to say about it for now. Okay, so next I have, um, three very big books <laughs> in my manga haul, and those are Tomi, Uzumaki, and Gyo, all by Junji Ito. How I'm holding these up in one hand, I do not know. Yeah, I decided to finally get the matching edition hardback volumes of some of Junji Ito's better known work. I know he has like lots of other like little mangas, short story collections, um, and that sort of thing, but I decided to just get these for now. So I'm not gonna talk too much about them because I feel like these are quite well known, but um, Gyo is basically, do I just say the one with a fish? Honestly, most of my memories of Gyo um, I, I always want to say, yo, Tokyo Fish Attack, because um, when I went to, I think it was, was it 2016's London Comic Con, um, you could not round a corner without one of the staff members trying to give away a free copy of Gyo, Tokyo Fish Attack, on DVD, um, the anime. Don't watch it. Not very good. Um, just, just read the manga. Then there is Tomi, I think I'm pronounced, uh, people say Tomi, but I think it's, if it's, I've seen it written in Japanese and it's Tomi, so I think it's, I, please correct me in the comments. Um, I think it's Tomia, but if I'm saying that like an ass, let me know. <laughs> so um, yeah, Tomia follows Tomia, and um, she's a young high school girl who I don't really want to spoil too much. Basically, it's kind of like this. I don't want to say sick. It's like it's, it's like this. It's kind of just this tale of this girl seducing men and forcing them to kill and dying and coming back to life and just repeating this over. <laughs> It's very, it's weird. Again, it's Junji Ito. It has been, I'm trying to remember like a lot of this, it has been many years since I've read this. I feel like I really need to reread it, is what I'm trying to say. I feel like most of you probably read these already anyway. And then obviously the last one I picked up is Uzumaki with the spirals. Um, again, I feel like you've all seen artwork from this book. Um, I think Uzumaki is the one that I see um, art taken from the most and posted about the most as like examples of Junji Ito and the way that he does horror. It's not necessarily like the scariest horror ever but visually again it's fantastic so um yeah i feel like everyone is like already well aware about uh, junji ito's work but um i'm finally collecting them in hardback and not just like 2016's free copy of go tokyo fish attack <laughs> kind of sticking i think potentially to like the same vein kind of like slightly horror i'm not entirely sure because i'm not ready yet but I feel like this is bordering on horror, is uh, Happiness by Shuzo Oshimi. This I saw for sale like for multiple years. Every time I went to a comic con, the cover just drew me in so much and I really liked the look of it. I swear when I picked this up, it was a much thicker volume, but maybe that was like a tank mod or something. Um, pretty sure this is about vampires. It doesn't explicitly say vampire, um, at least not on the back, I don't think, but I'm, I'm pretty sure we all know the vampire trope by now. So from what I could kind of tell from the synopsis, um, it's about a young boy who, I guess, meets a girl who is kind of obviously a vampire and I think she turns him and he also becomes a vampire and it's about him, I guess, kind of learning to... It's giving me Tokyo Ghoul vibes all of a sudden. But I guess it's kind of him um, figuring out how he's going to live with this. I don't really know much more than that, I just know the sort of standard, typical like vampire trope introduction um, and that's about it but you know me I'll read pretty much anything with vampires in it and the artwork in this one has kind of like interested me from afar for many years so I finally just decided like 
I have a paycheck, I'll buy it, sure. <laughs> Next is one that I'm actually really interested to read and that is Inside Mari and this one is also by Shuzo Oshimi. Um, this one, again, gave me like Kimi no Nawa vibes but like if Kimi no Nawa were creepy as hell. <laughs> so this is about a man who one day wakes up in the body of a young high school girl. You can already see like the red flags going off in my head um, and I think this is meant to be, I think it's partially about like either him getting a second chance or seeing things from this girl's perspective but I'm assuming that there probably will be like the odd creepy thing in there as well because there's no way to get around the ick factor of that. Invasion of privacy to the next level. Um, so I feel like this is going to have a lot of interesting plot points. Um, I feel like, I don't know if it's going to take like a psychological look at it or like a societal look at it or I don't really know, but the setup for this seems very interesting. Yeah, and I'm interested to see this take on it. I kind of want to pick this one up quite soon actually because it looks really interesting and I kind of like the art style. So Next is another one with, again, I think a really beautiful art style and I don't know how much you'll be able to see of this because it's very dark. Uh, but yeah, that is Downfall by Inio Asano and again, what drew me to it was the cover because the artwork is very interesting, it's quite unique. Uh, this is the same guy that did, I think it was Goodnight Pumpun, which actually I'll get to in a minute. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think this one tells the story of a mangaka, so a manga artist. I, I don't know whether his life is falling apart or whether he's just stuck in like this mental rut or something, but um, he's obviously not very happy. I think this is going to deal with like um, mental health. Um, I think depression might be like a theme in this, I'm not entirely sure, but it kind of gives me um, a little bit of that vibe. And I think it is pretty new. Uh, I think it's been released not that long ago. Um, so yeah, I just kind of had to pick this one up and I will probably maybe try and get to this one soon. Yeah, so I should have known when I was talking about um, Downfall that I was also going to be talking about Goodnight Pumpin, um, also by Inio Asano. And <laughs> this is another one where, much like um, Junji Ito, um, I've read. I don't think. I, I don't. I'm not sure if I've read all of this one before. I've read some of Goodnight Pumpin. Um, and it, again, it was a long time ago. And it's one of those where I can't remember how far I got at the time. Either way, I've never owned a print copy. And I decided to finally get one. Yeah, this is just another one that um, I feel like a lot of people have already read. This is not new by any means. This is just me adding to my collection. And the last book in my uh, manga haul for today is volume two of My Solar Exchange Diary by Nagata Kavi. And um, this is volume one, but I don't know what I've done with volume two. I've bought it, it's been delivered, I can check the tracking, I know I have it, I remember unboxing it, don't know what I did with it. So once again, me buying manga for my collection doesn't help if I I don't know what I did with it. Um, so, you know, for visual sake, I'll show you this one. But yes, I this is from the same author and sort of like a continuation of my lesbian experience with loneliness, which is a manga that I read several years ago and really loved. Um, this is the continuation of that. But one of my favourite things about this manga is that the shading is all done in pink. I, I love that so much. It is kawaii as hell. Um, but the story is, it's very sweet, um, but very dark at the same time. It's the author's, the mangaka's um, real honest experiences, her feelings and the things that happen to her and her mental health and her sexuality and just her situation in life and it kind of just details a lot of her struggles particularly with like self-image, mental health um, and her sexuality and it does it in a very like brutally honest way where she doesn't really sugarcoat anything but because she herself is kind of like a very um, sweet quiet sort of person um it's kind of like you really really feel for her i feel like there's a lot to really connect with here while it does have like this really cute kawaii art style it does deal with like some heavy topics so it is one that i'd recommend though because i really enjoyed the first one and i think there's a third sort of like arc or series coming out after this so yeah that was my manga haul i think there's like 10 or 11 books here just kind of wanted to share what i've been picking up and hauling recently and what i might be reading in the future so uh yeah that's about it i hope you guys enjoyed this video and maybe i'll see you guys in the next one bye